Meredith Whitney, you famously made an early call on the credit bubble by downgrading Citigroup in 2007. So why are you talking about the troubles in the states now? Well, it was actually covering the banks and being so immersed in the credit crisis that led me to the states because, of course, the housing boom, which caused all of this, um, was deeply planted in certain states, and the scars are deeper in certain states than others. So um, particularly the coast, the east-west coast, um, were the most heavily tied to real estate. Their entire economies were heavily tied to real estate. So in the middle of the, uh, in the depths of the credit crisis, um, it was important for me to figure out what was on the other side. So I was early it to call the credit crisis and then midway through I was so frustrated being associated with doom and gloom that I wanted to um, have something positive to say and understand where the U.S. would re uh, recover and recreate itself, resuscitate itself, revive itself. And it was clear to me that it was going to happen in parts that weren't tied to real estate because, again, the debt and leverage was so deep, it was going to be very difficult to, um, you know, to, to pull yourself out of. And what has come to pass over the last four years, so four and a half years ago I started this, five years ago I started this, um, has been it is built and built and built and there's been more clear support of that exact thesis. And so it took an incredible amount of work. I never ever imagined that I'd delve into state finances as much as I did. It's not, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody, anybody. Um, but it is critical in understanding how the U.S. economy is going to grow for the next 20 years. So why are the coastal states struggling while the interior states are ascending? Is it all political? There's also a big energy play with the fracking in, in the middle of the country. Yeah, it's it's multifaceted. So um, start with the fact that they have the central corridor states have just more dry powder than the coastal states because they didn't have a housing boom and they didn't have a subsequent housing bust. So their economies were much more le much less volatile than the coastal economies. On top of that, the they're, they're inherently agrarian economies, so they've been more conservative in terms of um, spending and cost escalation and jacking pay and jacking expenses um, that really ha don't have any correlation to revenue. So that also is dry powder. Then, um, uh, as you mentioned, um, and, and tied to that, they have lower tax, tax jurisdictions, which are attractive. Uh, they're also right-to-work states, which are attractive to businesses, allowing more flexibility to, uh, to for businesses to work with their employees. Um, and then you mentioned um, very clearly the U.S. is going through, there's just an incredible energy revolution, which is game-changing for the world and particularly for the U.S because um, it is so much cheaper to extract energy in the U.S. and to fund important businesses like manufacturing, materials, chemicals, um, and that has ripple effects throughout the entire economy. Um, that is going to change the U.S. in a profound way. So it's almost like a triple threat or a perfect storm for the Central Corridor, which is attracting businesses hand over fist. Well, perhaps surprisingly, California reported a budget surplus recently. Is what Jerry Brown is doing in California a good model for the rest of the country? So um, it's interesting. So you know you look at, uh, in, in finance, you look at the income statement and then you look at the balance sheet. So the income statement looks, looks pretty good. The balance sheet of California doesn't look so good. So states have incredible latitude to um, effectively gimmick the numbers. And I say that because I'm a, you know, I work on Wall Street and we deal with pretty straightforward oftentimes, most times, accounting, and you feel like you're dealing with apples to apples. That is absolutely not the case with the states. Now, things are improving, but things are still not what they look like on the surface. So California has an apparent surplus because um, uh, they raised taxes, but and they also had a windfall. I think a lot of states had a windfall from um, front-end loading because of the tax expirations in 2013, but January 1, 2013. Um, but there's something else that's going on, too. States are building debt off balance sheet in ways, very ways, say the same ways the banks built up debt off balance sheet, and that's not sustainable. So the off balance sheet debt for the states are unfunded pensions. So it's not as if California's pension is fully funded and they have a surplus and it's off to the races. Um, they got there by the state got there um, by you know not funding its pension properly and also raising taxes and also um, cramming down expenses to the localities. So it's not the states that I worry about so much; it's the localities because the states can cut off funding and states provide over a third of um, and up, up to 40 percent of the municipal and localities funding um, and then they also can cram down expenses without dedicating additional revenues. That's certainly the case of uh, in both instances of what California has done and what so many other states have done too.